Okay, dairy is one of those topics that there's a lot of uh, sort of, you know, just, just different opinions on that. I'm going to share that uh, in this video. First of all, we're going to provide some interesting facts. Some are fun, some are more sort of practical. And then I'll give you my thoughts about what I think about dairy at the end of this. So interestingly, natives in Russia and Finland back in the day actually used to put a frog in milk, you know, frog milk. And, and the reason they did that was to prevent it from spoiling. So apparently research later on has shown us that frogs actually secrete in their skin some sort of antifungal and antibacterial substances that can help prevent spoilage. And that's kind of interesting. Now, I don't know, uh, perhaps they're not using the poison, South American poison dart frogs or anything like that. But anyway, I, I probably don't recommend that as, as the best way. The other thing people used to do is, you know, back, uh, you know, back in the days in, the, in settling in the pioneers of the U.S., they would actually put silver, a silver coin, in a milk jug. And this is also known that silver is an antimicrobial uh, substance. Now, how long have humans been drinking milk? Say about 9,000 years is what we think. But interestingly, we apparently only evolved enzymes to help digest, digest it about 5,000 years ago. So many people still don't have uh, this gene and are, and are what's called lactose intolerant. Raw milk... Interesting, does not have the enzyme to break that down, but what it does is have bacteria that can produce uh, lactase in the GI tract. Now, raw milk is variably legal in the U.S. and currently about 29 states. It is considered legal, although the rules are variable. Now, what about breast milk? Well, human breast milk has over 200 uh, different types of sugar molecules in it, where other milks from other species, say cow's milk, has between 30 and 50 different types of sugars, and they're thought to be there as much as for about feeding the infant, but as just as much about feeding the infant's uh, microbiome. Now, what about before refrigeration? Well, for example, the Maasai in Kenya have a diet that is, as some of you know, primarily composed of meat, blood, and, and lots of milk. And their milk is not uh, refrigerated, but rather fermented. Uh, there are supposedly over 300 strains of lactic acid producing uh, bacteria. These produce enzymes that help uh, with milk digestion. Now, funny aside, when I was in uh, Kenya and Tanzania, I got the chance to interact with some of the Maasai. And I remember this is back in, gosh, 2000, some 20 some years ago. And they offered me some of their mixed blood and milk, and it was all, you know, the milk was coagulated or, or you know, it soured and the blood was coagulated, and it just smelled awful. So I, I did not partake in that, and I'm not sure I would even today, but it's interesting. Okay, what about the expiration dates? Well, expiration dates began in 1933 on milk, and why was this? Well, apparently it has to do with the Capone family. They had, they had purchased a number of large dairies throughout the Midwest in an attempt to make legitimate money, and so they asked for expiration dates. And why do they do that? Well, some say they wanted expiration dates to prevent illnesses from killing their business, but others say it was trying to make those uh, harder for competing dairies, dairies and to put them out of business. Now, uh, some milk is less digestible and more allergenic. Now, we know that milk from cows that have A1 or A2 uh, casein uh, will depend upon the cow's uh, genetic. The milk in an A1 protein is more problematic for people and less digestible, whereas A2 tends to be a little more digestible for other people. Uh, dairy cows in other parts of the world, like southern France, New Zealand, Australia, Africa, make primarily A2 milk. A goat milk is also often considered easier to digest primarily because the A2 uh, casein uh, that it is uh, that it is there. Now, milk has been named as a substance you can, that can be used to end childhood nutrition. Now, you know, here in the United States and other Western countries, we don't really think about malnutrition as in a big way, but still in lots of parts of the world, this is a real, real problem. And the United Nations and the FAO uh, has recommended milk along with meat and eggs as a solution to solve the nutrition crisis. Now, my thoughts on milk, you know, it is a wonderfully nutritionally dense product for sure. There's no doubt about it. It's a great source of protein. But there are people that don't tolerate it well. Now, it can be the type of milk it is. It could be uh, perhaps some people think it's a pasteurization, pro pasteurization process. Some people think it has to do with the milk is, you know, A1, A2, what type of milk it is, what's the form it's in, whether it's uh, butter, ghee, you know, cheese, yogurt, things like that. So those things all make a difference. And, and my advice to you guys is to experiment and see. There's a lot of people that do pretty well with dairy products. I am one that does okay with them. So I have them from time to time, but I know if I consistently have a lot of it, I just don't feel quite as well. So see what it does for you. Let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts about dairy in general. Do you tolerate it? Do you not tolerate it? Are there types of dairy that you do better with or not? Anyway, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, share with somebody you think is helpful, and I appreciate you guys uh, for subscribing along, and we'll talk to you on the next video.